Today I'm going to be presenting to you the environmental problems with the construction of the US 74 Monroe Bypass. There are many issues that have come about since the start date of the bypass. Factors that will be included in this presentation will include the amount of agricultural land that will be destroyed by the bypass, neighborhoods affected and churches affected by the bypass, and the environmental problems that will arise from the construction of the Monroe Bypass. Lastly, I'll mention the effect of time and money the bypass will have of the people of Monroe and the taxpayers of Charlotte, North Carolina. First, let us talk about the agriculture problems that the bypass has sprung up. According to Ken Hunter and Kate Askeith of the Southern Environmental Law Center, the bypass will destroy around 500 acres of agricultural land. This amount of land will lead to less production of farming in the Piedmont area. Some of the farms that will be lost have also been around for a very long time. One specific farm a family has owned since before the Revolutionary War. Now that's a very long time. The bypass will cause many problems for surrounding neighborhoods and households and businesses as well. 95 houses will be affected by the bypass and will probably have to be relocated or compensated for. They come in the line of the contact with the bypass and will cause problems in the construction. 47 businesses and 3 churches will also be affected and will need to be relocated. During the process of the construction, the bypass will affect 7 neighborhoods and some of the houses that are in those neighborhoods will have to be relocated. With the construction of the US 74 bypass, many people are wondering about what will happen with the environment of the area that surrounds it. So there are many different types of plants and animals that live in that area that will have to be removed from their home so that the bypass can be created. A detailed survey alternate was done by the North Carolina Turnpike Authority stating many different environmental problems that would arise because of the bypass. One thing mentioned was the harming of different protected species in that area. After the survey was completed, they found two different sites were found where there was a type of sunflower called Schwint. Some of the creators believe that the development would not encroach on this site where the flower exists, but for now it is on a may affect or may not affect basis. Scientists are still doing research about what will they will do for this sunflower. Now, there have also been environmental groups that have sued the company that is making this uh, bypass because of the environmental problems, and they're still kind of going through the lawmaking sections of this, uh, of this suing process. With the construction of the bypass, there are many good things and many bad things that can come about. Um, another environmental factor that will be harmed because of the bypass is the water in the surrounding area. Water will have to be mitigated by the NCTA and tested to know whether it is good or not good. This plays a role in the animal problems as well. If the animals normally drink from the water that is surrounding the bypass, that the same stream has been contaminated from construction of the bypass, there's a possibility that they may become sick. So to do this, scientists are testing the waters to make sure that the water is okay. And they will keep testing this until the bypass is finished. The bypass is said to be finished by around 2019, close to 2020. So it might be a little while until it's done. Next, let's take a look at a map that projects the bypass and where it shall go. The bypass will start all the way over near Waynesboro, North Carolina, and it will continue all the way into Charlotte, North Carolina, just outside of I-277. Now the bypass will go through um, parallel, it'll follow parallel with Highway 74 through Monroe, and it will pass through along Fairview Road, Indian Trail Road, um, Rocky River Road, US 601, and Morgan Mill Road through Austin Cheney Road as well. Now, this bypass is um, going to be very good for some and not very good for others. There is an estimated time of an 8 to 12 minute increase um, in travel time with the bypass. Now, I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but for some, that can mean the difference in the world. Now let's next take a look at the construction of the road configuration. On here on the bottom, this is what the road looks like now. There's just uh, a four lane highway. If you look up here at the top though, this is the proposed road configuration. There is a uh, six by six road and there are six lanes on one side, six lanes on the other, and there is a higher section up here for faster cars um, to travel. And this is uh, something that um, I think it's going to be very good. 
um, because um, if you, the faster cars are able to get up to the top and the slower cars up here on the bottom, then being able to travel actually might be an increase in time, especially for me. Um, so in conclusion, I would say that the bypass has some environmental problems that aren't as bad as they were thinking. Um, you know, with the water, that can be fixed over time. And then the plants, hopefully we can get that fixed as well. Thank you.